Welcome back to The Daily Scoop. This is Scoops Lane with part two of two. And uh, as promised, I'm gonna share uh, a little snippet from the survivor uh, who reached out to me after a training uh, symposium. And we met for coffee and um, we talked and she shared. I listened quietly for over three hours. And um, then we talked a little bit. I, I, um, I gave her some things to think about and I gave her a resource uh, which had some questions on it uh, to help her kind of understand. Really, it was a way for her to read back basically what she revealed, but it was then on paper. And then what this would do, I had hoped after spending four hours with her is that um, she would be affirmed and she would understand that this was happening to her and that it wasn't okay and that she didn't deserve to be treated that way and that she was in fact in danger in her own home and that she felt she needed to get herself and her child safe. So um, I shared that information. She went home that night and read it and she called me and she said, I've never seen this um, website before. I've never, I didn't know there was a name for this. Like I didn't know there was, it was called domestic violence. I never heard that term and I didn't know it was called sexual abuse and I didn't know that if I was married that my husband could rape me and um, I need to take the next step in developing uh, some kind of a, a plan um, because and or get some counseling because I, I really I don't know what to do but I finally recognize that I'm in an abusive situation and I don't want to be in it anymore but I don't have the slightest clue what to do and how to get out so uh, that was the beginning of her safety plan so she was immediately put in touch of course with the local shelter and uh, the rest is history. But what I want to share with you, because earlier in my first scoop, what I said was, I'm not going to reveal any confidences. Um, and everybody's story is unique. But when you read these questions, if you are in this situation and you can answer yes to even one of them, then light bulbs will start going off and you'll start being... Uh, recognized as you know this is not me this is my partner um, problem and I need to heal from this and I need to get treatment and I need to get out because I deserve to be safe and I don't deserve to be treated this way so that's those are kind of the ways uh, that women men and um, teenagers that are in these situations um, and dating partnerships start recognizing holy smokes I didn't even know um, this was abuse because he wasn't physically hurting me. You know, sometimes there aren't physical um, uh, attempts or, or physical signs. It's all emotional, psychological, financial. So when you start to recognize these other forms of abuse, then you start putting it all together and connecting the dots. So the questions on the very basic screening um, which were the first set of questions that she was referred to on the website for the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, which is the first um, resource I give to survivors, their families, any support system they have. Um, these are the, this is the website we refer people to. It's the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, ncadv.org. And the questions are these. First, it just says, do you think you are being abused? 
Look over the following questions. Think about how you are being treated and how you treat your partner. Remember when one person scares, hurts, or continually puts down the other person, it is abuse. And the questions are, does your partner embarrass or make fun of you in front of friends or family? Put down your accomplishments or your goals? Does your partner make you feel like you are unable to make decisions? Does your partner use intimidation or threats to gain compliance? Does your partner tell you that you are not nothing without them? Does your partner treat you roughly, grab, push, pinch, shove, or hit you? Does your partner threaten or abuse your pets? Does your, your partner call you several times a night or show up to make sure you are where you said you would be? Does your partner use drugs or alcohol as an excuse for saying hurtful things or abusing you? Does your partner blame you for how they feel or how they act? Does your partner pressure you sexually for things you aren't ready for? Does your partner make you feel like there is no way out of this relationship? Does your partner prevent you from doing things you want, like spending time with your friends or with your family? Does your partner try to keep you from leaving after a fight? Or does your partner leave you somewhere after a fight to teach you a lesson? Do you sometimes feel scared of how your partner will act? Do you constantly make excuses to other people for your partner's behavior? Do you believe that you can help your partner change if only you change something about yourself? Do you try not to do anything that would cause conflict or make your partner angry? Do you feel like no matter what you do, your partner is never happy with you? Do you always do what your partner wants you to do instead of what you want to do? Do you stay with your partner because you are afraid of what your partner would do if you broke up or left? Without help, abuse will continue. If any of these situations are happening in your relationship, Talk to someone you trust or call the National Domestic Violence Hotline. It's 1-800-799-7233. The following signs often occur before manifestation of full abuse, and they might serve as clues to one person in a relationship becoming abusive over the other. Think about the following questions and apply them to your partner. If you can identify with one or more of the following scenarios, or if you answer yes to any of the questions below, you may be with an abusive partner. And we would strongly suggest you call that number. Did your partner grow up in a, fi in a violent family? Does your partner tend to use force of violence to solve his or her problems? Does your partner have a quick temper? Do they overreact to little problems and frustrations? Are they cruel to animals? Do they punch walls or throw things when they're upset? Do they abuse alcohol or drugs? Do they have strong traditional ideas about roles and relationships? For example, do they think all women should stay at home, take care of their husbands, and follow their wishes and orders? You can change that to partner. Are they jealous of your other relationships? Anyone 
you may know? Do they keep tabs on you? Do they want to know where you are at all times? Do they want you with them at all the, time, all the time? Do they have access to guns or knives or other lethal weapons? Do they talk of using them against people or threaten to use them to get even? Do they threaten you? Do they expect you to follow their orders or advice? Do they become angry if you do not fulfill their wishes? Or if you cannot anticipate what they want? Anticipate what they want. Do they go through extreme highs and lows, almost as though they are two different people? Are they extremely kind one time and extremely cruel another? When your partner gets angry, do you fear them? Do you find that not making them angry has become a major part of your life? Do you do what they want you to do rather than what you want to do? Do they treat you roughly? Do they physically force you to do what you don't want to do? Do they threaten or abuse your pets? Threats in physical abuse are prevalent in relationship violence, often occurring in an escalating cycle. For anonymous, confidential help, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233 or 1-800-787-3224 for TTY. If you're in danger right now, call 911. So those are some resources. Again, it's the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. And uh, to reveal, um, you know, the survivor story, basically she said, you know, I could say yes to uh, about 98% of those questions and statements. Um, about my partner and when I uh, put myself in that situation and then I asked those same questions about my behavior do I do those things to my partner or to my child I said no every single time so um, this helped me she said recognize the warning signs so um, then she, you know, of course, was on her path to healing. So uh, that's the first step is recognizing it and having that um, affirmation and advocate tell you, yes, this is the resource you need. Uh, and there's advocates available to hold your hand every step of the way, just like someone was there for me. 20 plus years ago and it was from that immediate uh, emergency intervention where I ended up in the shelter I stayed in treatment I stayed at the shelter over uh, I believe it was 45 days um, I went into their transition program I lived with family I had support I had an order of protection for three years and um, just was embraced um, and the right people um, and the right inter interventions took place at the right time. I had the right attorney. Uh, he was well versed in domestic violence. He partnered with the local shelter and he put people on a sliding scale. Um, and he believed, uh, he believed women uh, from the moment they sat down and told their story. And uh, that's so important to have um, that you know, a relationship right away, not only with the shelter or what we call the treatment center that can help put you in touch with all the right, oh, let's call them doctors and specialists, right? Because this is a cancer we need to treat. And we've recognized that you have the relationship cancer. You answered yes to all these questions. And if the latter part of those statements are happening, that's considered a danger assessment that's very high on the Richter scale that, re that requires usually a stay in a shelter and intense trauma-informed treatment. Um, so, and yeah, you know, being out of work,